Hi, my name is Marco Mara and I'm going to be talking to you a bit about a set of ideas that I've got that I've actually put out sometimes as present to connect and sometimes I've put it up as presentations that don't suck. Um, but I'm actually going, I guess it's probably called um, present to connect. And this was, when I was a kid, this was an incredibly popular game. Um, I think partially because it was 3D. You know, it's Connect 4 for those of you who don't immediately recognise it. That, but it's still actually popular. I think part of it is that it's 3D and it's plastic and it's not just a flat, crummy board game. But I think what's actually really important about it and why um, I've you know, used this as an icon to start my talk is that when you're playing it, you're actually looking somebody in the eye. The board is giving you being up there you're actually making contact with them and interacting like this in a way that I think is fantastic and I think it explains part of its enduring popularity. So, um, first of all, before I go on, I want to acknowledge an intellectual debt and a debt of inspiration to um, Gar Reynolds who wrote these presentations and books. These have certainly inspired me, they have largely influenced me. Um, if you're interested in presentations, you absolutely want to be reading his books. I think there's three of them, and they're all fantastic. So, the first thing I'm going to talk about is why we present and how people feel about it. Now, you know, there's research to support everything, but the fact is that lots of people are scared of doing what I'm doing in terms of talking to a camera or but they're even more scared of talking to a whole room full of people particularly if they're people that they know they would in fact rather go in the dentist chair than they would actually face up and talk to people now I'm a teacher and we tend to be a bit more outgoing than most but even lots of teachers just do not like getting up and talking to people they find it really intimidating and I, I don't really understand that although I was a quite a shy kid but I understand the fear of the dentist. I'm very bad at that. I kind of avoid the dentist. So if you're feeling fearful, don't think, oh, you know, this is just me. Lots and lots of people feel fearful when they're speaking. So the other thing that I want to correct is when you actually connect well with your audience, you are, in fact, basically a rock star. You're this guy. You know, when you're getting up and you're being funny, then you're a comedian. When you're getting up and doing that, then you're a star. Um, you know, we often only call them presentations when people are being boring. But as you see from the phenomenon of the TED Talks, presentations can actually be really popular and really interesting. And I think that one of the real powers of presentation is that you can actually connect with people and energise with them in the same way that you get from a good performance like this. Like if you go to a concert, you don't actually get better quality sound. You know, you're uncomfortable and it's expensive and all of this. You go for the energy, for that transfer of kind of human, human energy and passion. And that's what you've got a chance to do when you're presenting. What I'm doing today is I'm kind of presenting because there's no audience for me to talk to. You can't, in fact, I can't make eye contact with you over there or over there. I can't ask questions. I can't get a laugh out of the audience. So I really want to say I'm talking to you about presenting, but I'm doing something that is kind of like presenting. So, you know, it's not as good. I would much rather be doing this in front of people. And as a quick plug, I do actually, you know, I'm available in Victoria to talk to people about this. Here's my three ideas. It's good to have three ideas. The first one is that there is a design stage that you do. I'll just look over my shoulder and check. Yes, there is the design stage. There is the construction stage, which is what lots of people think making a presentation is, just this stage. And then there is the actual delivery stage. So they're the three things that I'm going to be talking about. Let's start with the construction stage. It's important that you actually kind of assemble your talk before you start building the, the slides because your talk is about an idea and you need to get that idea in place before you actually start just work, putting together the pack. So the first thing you want to say is, what is my message? Now, a lot of people are not comfortable with this, but I actually think your central idea you should be able to explain to people in one sentence. You know, so my central idea is that Presenting well is easy, and I'm going to show you how to do it. So I've got one idea, and if I've got five or six ideas, then maybe a presentation isn't the right thing to do. Maybe I should be writing a book, maybe I should be putting it on a blog, maybe I should have a series of talks about it. I really think it's important that you, somebody walks out of your presentation and they go, yes, I know what he wanted me to understand, I know what he was passionate about. So first of all, what is your one idea? And maybe workshop it and maybe write it and maybe try and make it as short as a bumper sticker. 
And that's probably going to be the title of your presentation. So that actually is quite some intellectual work. What am I trying to say? And you should be able to turn to the person next to you and tell them in one sentence and they should be able to understand it. And if you think that your idea is too complicated for that, I'm telling you you're wrong. You need to push it down so that you can have a coherent idea. I'm not asking you to be simplistic, I'm asking you to be coherent so that the person who walks away can say, yes, this is what they were talking about. So, once you've got your message, you then break it into three ideas that you're going to use to demonstrate that message. You know, to use this example here, if you were talking about evil, then you would talk about speak no evil, about hear no evil, and about see no evil. And that might be the framework for your talk. Again, what I actually do when I'm working with students is I get them to do a mind map and actually pull out five or six different ideas, maybe 10 or 15, and then pick only the three that will support my core message. And you don't need the computer for any of this. In fact, I'd encourage you to leave the computer turned off or don't have your presentation software open. This is an intellectual exercise in that you are picking the best ideas. Don't even go and research them at this point. Just what would bring people across to what I want them to understand. So, you've got to get your three ideas. I'm racing through this, but you know, you might have spent an hour doing these last two steps. So, I like the old-fashioned mind map. I, I work well on paper. I know some people think that, you know, with iPads and stuff, it is changing. I know my idea about that is going out of date. I still do my brainstorming on paper, and I think I still see students doing it most effectively on paper. Maybe in a couple of years I'll be proven wrong on that one. So, your brainstorm when you do it should be an actual storm. I think that brainstorming has become has meant kind of merely mouthed, kind of just plodding, putting out boring ideas and pretending to do work. Like this storm, your brainstorm should be violent and dangerous and you should put everything in there. You should say things that are controversial and things that are contested and things that you believe and things that perhaps you've heard but you don't believe. Um, that's what should go into your brainstorm. And then you can prune it down. But you should be honest with yourself and emotionally engaged in your brainstorming process. It should be something that feels risky. Like, would this work? Should I put this out there? Am I brave enough to say this? Would I be foolish to say that? Because that's where a really, you know, presentations are about passion. So brainstorming, do it with passion. Have stories to tell, even before you, particularly before you start building your slides. You know, stories, we've been doing stories a lot longer than we've been doing presentations. So have a good story to tell. I often tell stories when I'm doing this for real about particular students I've had. You know, about Melinda who made people cry or Ricardo who made people angry. You know, and I'll tell the whole story and stuff because we remember stories. Like, it's just how we've transmitted information for thousands of years. Um, you know, way before people were literate. You, you learn through storytelling. It's still a really powerful thing to do. So you should be thinking, what story can I tell in such a way that it will get my point across? You should also, and maybe not plan to be funny, but allow yourself to be funny in your talk. If you've got a funny story, if something happens, you know, I did a presentation not all that long ago where we couldn't get the door to shut. And, you know, I laughed about how hard it was just to do the door. And then I kind of had a recurring joke where I said, well, you know, back when I was young, you know, you could just close the door. You didn't need, you know, an iPhone to make it happen. And it wasn't a particularly funny joke, but it was the way that I'm funny. And things will happen in your talk. It's okay to be, to engage with the audience and connect. Because if people are laughing with you, they're on your side. I actually find that audiences don't engage people with people much who refuse, who take themselves too seriously. I think you can talk about a dreadfully serious topic, but that doesn't mean there isn't space for human joy in it. You know, there, there's, there's, let humanity into your talk. Be funny in the way that you're funny. Not the way that I'm funny, or that your best friend's funny, or that somebody on the telly is funny, but allow yourself to make that emotional connection with the audience. And what I would also say, and again, history will probably prove me wrong, is actually draw up what you want your slides to look like. And I call this storyboarding, like they do for movies, so that when I actually get to looking for images, I know what I'm looking for. 
I'm not just searching on the internet or whatever's available to me and saying, which of these thousands of images will I use? Well, it's millions of images. I actually know that I want to start with my first slide of the picture in this girl with her friends. And, you know, that I want to represent a particular idea and I go looking for that image. Now, this is when you move on to the construction phase. And this is what most people think of as making a presentation. So, the first thing I want to say, well, actually, the first thing I don't want to say, I hope you can read that. Just on the off chance you can't read it off the video, I wouldn't do this in a real presentation because I'd know you could read it, is the secret of being a bore is to tell everything. And that's from Voltaire. Now, the point of this is, just because you know 100 things about this topic doesn't mean you have to tell the audience all 100 things. Just pick your three big ideas that will support your message. Don't make slides for everything. Don't tell people about 10 things. I actually really think three. I don't know what's special about three, but three is good. So just tell them the three things that will get them to be as passionate as you are. If you do want to give people a large amount of data, if you want to give them detailed information, if you want them to read a book, if you want them to, you know, I've seen people put up huge spreadsheets with heaps of information in it, and you just stare at it glassy-eyed. Give them a handout. You know, print it up for them. Uh, I'll just go back to that one. Put it on the web. Like, set up a website for them. Give them a PDF. Put a QR code up. You know, give them something to take away. Don't stand there and just read to people, because, you know, most people you're going to be presenting to can read. They don't need you to sit there and read to them. If, it, if you're reading a story, that's an author talk. That's not a presentation. That's a different thing. The other thing when you're constructing is keep the text as simple as possible. This exercise I do with students is that, in fact, this looks like free pint of beer, a really simple sign, but in actual fact, tonight could go, probably just pint of could go, the logo could go, just free beer. And I just did that backwards, I'm aware of that. It's like free beer. You know, you just want people to know the core of your message because when they're reading, they're not listening to you. I actually try and have, and I often steer students toward this, no text at all. Not even people with t-shirts with writing on them. Not signs on shops because people read. And when they're reading, they are not paying attention to you. They are reading. They might think they're doing both at once, but in actual fact you've lost their attention. So, let me try and keep yours. Oh, instead of text, and this is one of these things we've been doing for a long time, use strong visuals. You know, people just know that that is R2-D2. This is the genius of the Star Wars franchise. That, you know, these icons are recognisable to little people and old people and people speaking other languages. And you don't have to read that. You just get it in a millisecond and then you're back to listening to me. And if I get confused about what it is that I'm talking about, I'm like, hang on, where am I in this presentation? I look, I see the clear image. I think, that's right. I'm talking about using iconic colourful images that fill the whole screen. Um, some people, I don't know where this comes from, they use a tiny fraction of the screen and have this huge border around it as if they're paying for the pixels. You know, you've got a big space, paint on a big canvas. You want to capture people. You know, this is, this is not all that far from what a number of presentations look like, even today. You know, crummy images, telling people the bleeding obvious and just reading it out to them. So, you know, you look at this image here, and you've got all that white space around it. You know, we can do better than this. You can put the board around it, and that improves it a little bit. So, actually, the point I was going to make is this is, if you can't get it to go big, or when really big is obviously better, you can always go small. Sometimes you are going to get an image where you just can't scale it up. Or, in fact, it being small is the point of it. You know, if it's a postage stamp or a mouse or, you know, a piece of nano circuitry or something, you're going to want it to give the sense of it being small. Just pop it in there in the white space. Apple do this brilliantly with their, um, their iPads and so forth. They use um, white space brilliantly to make stuff look elegant, to make it look iconic. Um, your presentation should look elegant and iconic too. So, if you're going to use a graph, again, don't give people every single piece of information. 
you know, I've made up this graph and I think bits of it have been cut off on the video, but I've said simplicity here and impact. So as simplicity increases, so does impact. Now I made up that graph, but you should take the time to get your data and put it into a simple graph that tells the story you want to tell. Don't put a graph up there that's got 17 lines on it and then say to the audience, oh, the puce line represents, you know, the incidence of domestic violence. You know, domestic violence is your passion. Put it up there as boldly and simply as you can. I'm not talking about dumbing it down. I'm talking about communicating. Now, here is something that I have borrowed from, I think I first learnt this in the Gar Reynolds books, but you also hear photographers talking about this. And this is about sweet spots. Think of your screen as like a noughts and crosses board. The place you want to be putting images are on the intersections here. That's where you want to put your images. They look more pleasing. So, for example, that doesn't work as well as that. Bad. And again, people think, oh, the middle is good. Actually, the middle isn't as good as one of the sweet spots. So I'll give you an example. This picture here is actually not really, it's about sky and land, but it's actually not particularly about one more than the other. This is very much a picture about land, and so we have put it along that line of the noughts and crosses across there and used that as our dividing line. And if I put it on that bottom line there, then now it is a picture about sky. So you are creating meaning when you do this, and when you put an image in, you're thinking, what do I want people to notice here? How do I frame this? So, let's get to how you deliver your talk. So, the first thing is you need to know what your space is. If you're going to talk, don't walk in there two minutes before and look surprised because they don't have an adapter. Or there's no microphone, or the seats are in the wrong place. Actually get in there and know the space. That is your responsibility as a presenter. You know, of course you're going to be flustered if it's not what you expect. So go in so there are not surprises. Second thing is that sometimes you're going to go in and it's not going to be the space you want. This is a photo I took when I went to a university. The speaker is down here, and that's up there. Now, the focus should be on the speaker, and I'm actually really pleased to say she's holding their attention there. But you might need to use a black slide up there. So you put up the slide, you get people's attention, and then when you need your attention back on you, you just put up a blank slide. So there's nothing to compete with you, so that you are, in fact, the show again. So you might need to make that change on the day. You might need to open your presentation software, and you might need to go in and actually make those changes. And that's better than doing a bad presentation. Who cares if you change it five minutes before the show? Just get in there and make it work. Practice. I know that people feel self-conscious about practicing these sorts of things, but it's really, really important. Musicians do it. Footy stars do it. You know, it's what makes us better at stuff. There's neuroscience to prove this. If you do something again and again, you get better at it. This guy's practicing his guitar. You should practice your talk. You should have heard it so many times, literally come out of your mouth, that you can stand up and just talk to people about it. Next, actually go back and make changes if you need to. You know, as I said, if you get in there and the venue has, has not what you expected, then get in there and actually change your slides. There is nothing well, no, I think it's bad when you go and see people who put up their presentations and then they're clicking through them and say, oh, don't worry about that slide, don't worry about that slide, don't worry about that slide. They knew they were coming here to speak. Fix it before you get up there. Revise it and improve it. So, Rome. That's one of my bad dad jokes. That's a photo of Rome. You should not be stuck next to your laptop pressing the space key. These clickers cost about 20 bucks. If I was doing this for real, I would, in fact, be on and off camera all the time, I wouldn't be stuck behind a microphone in the corner, I'd be out making eye contact with people. This is why this is not a presentation. I would be five times more mobile than this because I'm excited about what I'm talking about. Don't stick yourself behind a lectern or something, just, just get out there and talk to people. Your physical energy will bring meaning to what you're doing and it actually frees you up to talk to the audience about your big idea and how there's such a space here and we're going from high to low. And 
I'm just going to pick up my pace a little bit here. You should have a space program. You should know, and that's again another dad joke about the space program, that I'm going to talk about I have my first idea, my second idea, and my third idea. Now my first idea is down here and then we're going to move up to my second idea and my third idea. Even if you're imagining a line that you're walking up and down while you're talking, you should plan to move because if you don't plan to move then you're planning to stand still and there's no energy in that. Next up, do not read to people. It is just unbelievably boring standing there reading your speech to people. There is connection happening in this slide. The connection here is between this boy and this book, and that's lovely, but that's not what present presenting is about. It's not reading a prepared speech. Actually get up there and connect with people. Make eye contact with them. You know, I'm trying to do make eye contact right now with the camera. If you are looking at your speech and up and down, or if you're staring at the floor, or if you're worth staring at your slides, you are a missing an opportunity to make fantastic contact with people. This is one of the best things about doing a presentation is this eye contact it is so powerful, it is so persuasive. Don't give it up, embrace it. It will make you feel good, it will make them feel good. I cannot overestimate eye contact. You don't have to talk all the time. The eye contact, the looking at the audience, the using pictures, the enthusiasm. It's all about actually being there in the moment. That's what your audience is going to be energised. Please don't remove yourself emotionally from the moment. Actually be there. So there are my three ideas. You're going to design it, you're going to construct it, and you're going to deliver it. Because it's about you making a connection with your audience. This story here of these girls, this is a story about human beings connecting. It's not about technology. It's about them being thrilled by making that connection with another human being. And that's what you've got an opportunity to do as well. So, if you're really interested, I'd really encourage you to buy Gar Reynolds' books or get them from the library. They're fantastic. Um, I do things a little bit differently than him, but he's, he's a gem. Um, and so that's it. That's my presentation. Do well. Um, I've, there's, I'm acknowledging all of the images that I've used. But what I want you to be doing in your presentation is I want you to be concentrating on connecting with your audience and enjoy your presentation because it's a, it's a fun and powerful thing.